Hello, hello, hello. I'm Joe Romayo, one of the trustees at the Kurt Geiger Kindness Foundation. Welcome to Inspiration Sessions, where I interview some of the industry's finest. I'm joined by two of them right now. Um, I would love to quickly go around. For those who don't know who you are, could you tell us a bit about yourself and what you're currently up to? Yeah, so uh, to introduce ourselves, so my name is Carlin. I'm Kevin, uh, we're the Flag Twins and we hail from Peckham. Um, now, for those of you that don't know us, uh, our background is in modelling and publishing. So we started the modelling game, I'd say right about five years ago. Yep, correct. Uh, right about five years ago, and it's a very interesting journey. Um, modelling was something that we never ever aspired to get into or didn't even know was actually a full-time real job. Um, I think off the back of that, more so entered, I'd say, different sort of spaces within this sort of creative um, space, if you want to call it that. Um, and now run a publication called Mission Thinner Magazine. So that's us. Cool. <laughs> well, I think I need to expand because you're not only models, you're entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, you're in the music space, you're DJs, mm -hmm. you're creative directors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, why don't you go into a little bit more detail just about some of the individual things? Do you know okay. what, like, I thought, yeah, E-Man knows me more, by the way, like, you know, but, um, yeah, I think, like I mentioned, you know, fashion was an entry or entry point into more so, i say, our wider career. Now, I think for us, you know, curiosity is at, like, the helm or, like, the origin of just how everything kind of came about, you know? Yeah. I think, you know, coming into this sort of fashion space, uh, Carl was actually a banker. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, before this sort of, I'd say, sort of creative journey. So we've always had somewhat of a business mindset, you know, coming into this sort of um, industry. Um, throughout that, I think also, you know, impact also is a massive sort of pinpoint into what we do. And I think, you know, we understood very early on that, you know, fashion isn't the only industry where we can create impact, you know. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in different music spaces. It's going to be in the philanthropy space. So mm -hmm. I think our whole sort of, I'd say, you know, um, our whole existence is basically sort of predicate on more so what areas or what industries can we more so affect the level of change? I'd say more on a relatable um, standpoint, I think, mm. you know, for us, our journey really started 10 years ago. Um, so our, 10 years ago, our father passed away. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest test of adversity that we had to face, you know. Sure. Um, Kevin mentioned that we were very curious. And I think for us, curiosity was something that was very important and very direct in our journey because curiosity meant that we were in search of something greater than ourselves. Sure. And um, we were very fortunate that fashion was almost that entry point into you know, feeling like curiosity. Mm. Um, and so fashion has almost been this catalyst to almost kind of get us to the position that we're in now. But I also say as well, you know, I think growing up as kids, you couldn't put us down just to do one thing. You know, I think we always knew that we were you know, destined to just do more than just one role. You know? Um, and I think obviously, as you mentioned, you know, going into, I'd say, this whole entrepreneurial space, you know, we understood that I think for us being, two of us especially, you know, we have just more manpower, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And I believe that in saying that, you know, music was a great, I'd say, sort of other offering, you know, in which we can actually, you know, exert a level of energy. So you can catch us behind the decks, playing at the best, the biggest parties, and again, bringing that energy straight to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sort of expanding on that and going into that, 10 years ago, yeah. um, you know, you have that pivotal moment. Mm -hmm. sure. Did you believe that at this point you would actually be doing what you're currently doing? Was that like part of the vision or? Well, I, I, tell you, I tell you this, Jeremiah, I don't think we knew exactly what we wanted to do, but I think that we had a feeling of what we wanted to achieve. Yeah. Now, I think for us, mm -hmm. one thing that's massive in our, you know, our branding is legacy. So to kind of break down what flag means, flag, the F is for family, the L is for legacy, the A's for accountability and then the G's for grassroots. For sure. And again, for us, is, you know, this wasn't essentially what we created, but it was a feeling that we created. For sure. And so for us, that's why all of this has organically come into point because we've always felt that that was something that we wanted to achieve. But also I think in saying that, you know, no one really knows where they're going to be next week, let alone in a year's time, let alone 10 years. And I think obviously for us more so, you know, having each other, I think we made a promise to each other, you know, we told each other that we weren't, A, going to let each other down, but I say, B, we're going to push each other to a maximum, I'd say, point in life that we'll be, you know, sat down right now as we are, saying, do you know what, take a deep breath and say, wow, we've done so much. So I think in saying that, you know, I'm blessed to be where we are right now, but yeah. honestly, 10 years ago, I couldn't tell you that we'd be here, let alone sat down next to yourself, let alone be, you know, where we are right now, to be quite fair. So very, very humble, to say the least. So, you know, currently at Kurt Geiger, we're building the Business by Design program. So it's a program being set up for 18 to 20 year olds. It's a free learning program. 
and it's all about learning how to break into the creative industry. Um, you know, we felt it was super important um, to help young, young people who really want to get into the industry to have an easier route to sort of access. So with that being said, um, you know, going back a couple of years um, and even looking at where you are now, how easy has it sort of been uh, to, to sort of break into the industry? Well, if I could be very super transparent with all of you guys, actually, you know, I think our entry point into the fashion industry was very, very, it's kind of normal, actually. We were actually working at Diesel Jeans, the retail store, you know. So as anyone does when they become 16 and they want to get a job, make a bit of money for themselves and stop relying on mummy and daddy's money, you know, we said, OK, cool, we're going to actually get ourselves some retail jobs, you know. And again, it started, you know, it started so naive in a sense of more so, you know, we were going to go to this weekend job that we do on a Saturday and a Sunday for eight hours of our time, to be quite fair. But I think in saying that, it was very easy for us to more so navigate and understand, I'd say, a bit of the industry from a ground level, if that makes sense, you know? I mean, being involved as a brand from a ground level, I think for us, done us the best part, you know, because we actually understood the DNA of the brand, you know? Yeah. If I'm selling a, a, a customer a pair of shoes or even a t-shirt, you know, I have to justify why they should be spending that money. But also in saying it, you know, I have to almost kind of sell them to a lifestyle, which again, the brand also did, you know? But I think also as well, I think it enhanced our soft skills. You know, I think for us, you mm -hmm. know, one thing that's been very, and again, you know, I think to say it's easy, it's, you know, would almost be an understatement. You know, I think it's an interesting journey and I think you've got to be ready sure. to you know, jump on the ride. You know, I think to kind of add to Kevin's point, you know, uh, working we take weekend jobs gave us the soft skills that I think are needed to work in a creative industry. You know, yeah. because you need to understand you're working with people and emotions. 100%. So, you know, finance is very different where you're working with numbers and institutions, but I think creativity in a sense is working with people and emotions, you know. Yeah, sure. And so for us, why we kind of almost kind of call it easy is because I think growing up, you know, our mother instilled of us um, just that level of confidence and that ability to be very interpersonal and also have a level of emotional intelligence. Yeah. So for us, kind of coming into any room, whether it been at a, you know, at a clothing store or whether it's a big industry event or whether it's we're meeting some of our peers, for us, we almost kind of were recanting on most right. of our experiences that we kind of interacted with people and our soft skills, really. So that was how, I guess, for us, it's kind of been a very... I wouldn't say easy journey, but it's been it's organic. Been easy, yeah, organic. organic. It's been organic. organic. Very yeah. organic. Very authentic. 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 And yeah. I think that's what yeah. the sweet spot is. The authenticity and the organic is sure. what the sweet spot is, to be fair. Yeah. So, so with that being said, actually, do you feel like you had any sort of pressure to sort of go down a traditional route in life work-wise? Because even with me and myself, um, Nigerian background, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, you know, bro, yeah. I think you already just said it, you know, anyone who comes from any sort of, I'd say, sort of ethnic minority, you know, there is such an emphasis on, education. you know, education, and that's something that I actually did, actually, I went to university, so the difference between me and Carl, you know, not a lot of people know, is that after school, he went straight into a banking job, and I went into a university role, well, university role, university studying, <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean to say is, you know, I studied international fashion business, and I understood very early on that I wanted to have an application towards the business savviness that I had, you know? Um, and I think in saying that, you know, for us or for me more specifically, it was, you know, a very great opportunity not only to learn, you know, about the industry, but also to actually really understand the business acumen that it almost kind of takes to actually survive in such an industry, to be quite fair. Um, so I think, you know, we definitely were blessed to have two different, I'd say, exposures to mm -hmm. more so the world. And it's a more so, he's actually, you know, directly taken it in. And I'm actually being taught it. So, you know, coming back together at home, you know, when we meet each other at the end of the day, it was really interesting to also kind of, you know, teach each other or also kind of educate each other on just the different elements and different sides of the business, if you want to call it that. How important would you say a programme like Business by Design is um, to, you know, the young people today? Too so important. Young people Too important trying German. to break into the industry. Too important. I'd German. say, why I'd say it's very, I wouldn't, Important to understand that this is it's needed, it's a necessity, you know. Now, for me, before I got into a finance role, I actually went through a few programs that were very similar. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I realized, and again, what I'm, I, I understand, especially from the Kindness Foundation and the Business by Design program, is it gives you quite a few things, right? I think, first and foremost, it instills you view the confidence, first and foremost, mm -hmm. you know. I've always said to everybody that creativity is a mindset, you know. You yeah. never ever just step into the creative industry, you have to think creatively, you know. And then for you, and in order for you to think creatively, you've got to understand how does your lens on the world shape someone's, you know, how, how does your lens on the world shape some, um, how does your lens on the world shape an idea, or 
how does it end on, on a certain but I think also, just to kind of, again, sort of support your point, I think why I really mentioned it is very important is because, you know, I think from 18 to 20, 20 years old, you know, we're at such a vulnerable stage in the sense of also we're trying to formulate these ideas of what we want for the next 10 years of our life, you know? But I think up until a program like this is presented to you, you don't have any level of guidance, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think in saying that, you know, what this program for me does is more so it gives you that level of, okay, called hope. Mm -hmm. But also it allows you to take the help that you need, you know? I think as humans, you know, especially as young kids, you know, sometimes we're not really, you know, I'd say open to taking the help, you know. But I think what this does is more so it gives you a list of trusted individuals, you know, who have gone and had tireless amounts of experience, but also a level of uh, dedication to what they do to then share that knowledge. So I think, again, in saying that, you know, it has the formula for success. And I always, you know, say to you guys, if you want to definitely have some level of, you know, I'd say succession or more so a level of, I'd say, guidance, this is the foundation for you. This is the program for you. So, so we've been sitting on a massive secret. Um, so to everyone watching, you know, me and the boys actually went to college together. <laughs> yeah, um, crazy. So, you know, years back. You full know, circle moment, I must say, Jeremiah. Massive full, massive circle, full circle moment. Circle. And, you know, sort of just looking back to when we first met and just what you guys are doing now, like you just transcended to incredible incredible heights i think with that being said on your personal journey together what would you say was the highest point so far oh i'd say the question. highest point well what i will say i think the woodshed moment was probably i'd say the gucci show last year mm. now why i'd say the gucci show was a watershed moment was because it was a multitude of reasons right now, I think for two boys from Peckham to work for one of the biggest maisons in Milan is probably one that, dream that you probably don't even think you're ever going to achieve. For sure. And I think that gave us the, instilled of us the confidence, but most importantly, it gave us the energy to really understand, like, okay, cool, I think we're touching on something here. But also, you know? I think from the beginning, or the genesis of our careers, you know, I mean, we, again, we kind of touched on that point of us going into retail, but you know, we were then discovered by you know the eventual owner, Renzo Rosso, who we're gonna give a massive shout out to, you know, um, at the stores, who then obviously put us through for a campaign, and that was the start of our modeling career, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they always say, What is the biggest moment? You know, I say, How do I compare moments when everything just seems to be bigger, better, no, more nice. impactful? But I think in saying that I do agree with Carl, I think Gucci was a moment that I'll always be forever grateful for. But also, I think, let us know that we're actually now touching the biggest mm -hmm. heights in this sort of industry. And let us understand the, the, the level that we're playing at, you know? I think yeah. sometimes, especially in this creative space, you know, mm. we sometimes undermine ourselves. Yeah. Um, because there's not a lot of tangibility in the space. So you don't have a lot of things that will almost reaffirm. Or even people that let you oh. know how well you're yeah. doing. Yeah, you know? there's not a lot of gratification yeah. in the space. And I feel as if you've got to gratify yourself first before obviously you look for other gratification. And so that's why the Gucci thing was amazing because it was at a point where they gratified us, but we also gratified ourselves. Yeah, true. And so it then obviously created this Massive almost this energy of everyone now see us for who we really are to be quite fair. Yes. So. You know what that reminds me of? I, I actually came across something on social media and it was about a guy who was really, really old um, and he was sort of like passing away soon and um, he gave one of his old watches mm -hmm. to his son. And he said to his son, go and take it to a pawn shop and tell us how much they'll give you for the watch. The guy came back and said, oh, they're, they're, they're gonna give me $150 because they said it's really, really old and it isn't worth anything. He said, go and um, check online or go to another place and check it. And it was even lower than that original shop. And then he said, go and take it to a museum and the son took the watch to a museum and he came back saying, Dad, they said they're going to give me half a million pounds for, <laughs> for the watch because, you know, it's an antique and it can sure. be part of a collection that they have there. Mm -hmm. um, and the learning within that, you know, is that your value never is erased. Mm -hmm. You know, your value is your value. You are who you are but your environment surrounds you. Can I support that point, actually? It's mm. funny, because I was reading an interview, actually, of Virgil Abloh, and he said, it's not about the product that you make, but it's the environment in which you put it in. Correct. If I was to actually, if I was to make a candle, right, and I was to put it on the streets, you wouldn't really take it in, to be quite fair, right? But if I put that same candle in an art gallery, you look at it and say, this is art. Right? Oh, but I think oh. to testament that yeah, as well, I think to testament that is more so, take us, for example, right? Now, I think where the true gem lies in that is also about what environments are we in? 
you know, and where are we positioning ourselves to make ourselves, you know, truly light up our value, you understand? Yeah. Now, again, something mm -hmm. like this, for example, the, you know, the, the program, you know, it's a very great place for you to almost kind of shine through, you know, and really meet other people who are also on that same journey with you as well, to be fair. So, Correct. again, it's just more so where you position yourself is so important. And, you know, I think that is what the art is ourselves. We are the art. Our brains are the art. The creativity is it's the art. art. And so, well. depending on what environment we want to put in, and that's where the value will come through. Definitely. Um, you know, we touched on your highest point, mm -hmm. but I actually want to flip it on its head. Mm -hmm. So what would you say on this journey currently has been your lowest point, your lowest moment? That's to be super transparent. I think it kind of came in the form of when we actually started the magazine, to be quite fair, right? Because that was an actual business. And I think one thing they don't tell a lot of, you know, the younger generation is that more so as a creative, you are your own business, you mm -hmm. know? And so I think in saying that more so, you know, when you have a lot of, again, you know, uh, backend stuff in the background, you know, that almost kind of, I'd say, sort of taints the creativity. There's more than just the creativity to actually think about, to be quite fair, you talking know? About people. Um, people, you got invoices. About the invoices, the finances, the legalities and stuff. So Products. I'd say my, my, you know, my lowest point isn't necessarily, um, you know, anything sort of like a experience that I've gone through that I'm saying is negative, but I think a period of time when things almost felt as if they were kind of crumbling, if that makes sense, you mm -hmm. know? It was actually at the peak of COVID when the magazine basically launched. So we launched the magazine during COVID when everyone told us don't launch, you know? Mm. And so I think, you know, again, ambition, you know, took over the actual pragmatism of actually doing it. But I think in saying it, you know, we arose so many different problems in the sense of more so, you know, for the first time in my life, I started questioning or put myself in ultimatums. Do I, you know, support my mom at home or do I pay an invoice for creative? Mm. You know, and I think sometimes you almost kind of think that these sort of, I'd say, ultimatums are so black and white. But I think at the same time, it's not always that way, you know. Yeah. Someone who I need to pay also has, have, also has a family, also has someone they've got to look after. But I've also got a mum at home who also needs my support. So I think in saying that, my most difficult point in time was more so being faced with decisions or choices mm -hmm. that people think are black and white that aren't always yeah. that easy to make. But I think know? where the silver lining came into is more so our community and mm. more so having people around us that really supported us, you know? Sure. Now, yeah. if again, one thing that's brilliant about the magazine and publishing space is the fact you have an audience and you have people that rely on you to feed them information and, yeah. you know, give them a feeling of energy, you know? And again, you know, like our community were very supportive of us, you know, like a lot of people on our journey were always, you know, asking them how can they help and, you know, and that's where a lot of the remedies came through, you know. So our biggest problem turned out to be our biggest solution, our biggest, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. No, correct. So taking it on a lighter note, mm -hmm. if you could be one person, one famous person for 24 hours, dead or alive, who would that person be? I'd be Jeremiah Emanuel. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be Jeremiah Emanuel. I'd be, yeah, he'd be, be Jeremiah Emanuel. I'd be, and let me tell you why, because we touched on that story about, you know, going to college together and, you know, meeting, but I just want to say, you know, this man here is a true testament to what this program's about. Mm -hmm. In sure. saying that, you know, this man, I remember, you know, when we were sat down at assembly and you were given the assembly and I was confused. I was thinking, what's he doing up here? <laughs> but, you know, he spoke so well about more so his going life, you know, which was philanthropy, charity, being able to give back, you know. And I'd say why I want to be you is because, again, this is what this program is about, bro. Mm. It's about bringing on people who are dedicated, dedicated to actually, you know, mm. seeing more than just themselves a people, a generation, grow to become something greater than themselves. And I think in saying that, there's no other celebrity that I want to be than this man right here. Uh, <laughs> no, I appreciate it, bro. If I was going to be a celebrity, who would I be? Um, ooh, I was going to say you, but then I'd, I'd be very vain. vain. Um, if I was to be one person, uh, who would I be? I'd probably be maybe like a Fred Hampton. So somebody who, again, Fred Hampton speaks to a lot of us, especially the youth, you know, because this is somebody who, didn't rely on his age or experience to stop him from really saying, speaking his message, you know. Mm, and sure. I think, again, what, that, what he teaches me is to always be very true to myself, uh, to always amplify my voice, but to always amplify others as well, you know, for because sure. we're only as strong as the next man next to us. Um, and that's something that I really, really hold dear to myself, you know, because, again, you know, I learned a very interesting quote. They said, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with others. And I think for us, you know, one thing that we can all say that we're trying to sure. do is we're trying to leave a legacy. Yeah. And a legacy isn't one minute or 10 days or a year it's or a 10 years, it's a lifetime. Sure. And so I think for us, that's what we continue doing every day is to try to continue a legacy and try to build that. So I'd say Fred Hampton is a very, one. yeah, massive inspiration for me. Cool, what is one color that you never dye your hair? 
Back to, back, back to black. I'll never go back to black. <laughs> I've never, never, <laughs> never gone back to black. I've told you guys, like, so long as I'm blonde, I believe that, you know. We'll have more fun. We'll have more fun. Do you know what? I'm going to shake your hand on that one. Because right. <laughs> I'll be with you. Um, so, so just to um, recap again, guys, this is all about business by design. We're putting together a learning program for 18 to 20 year olds who want to break into the creative industry. Um, you know, you're going to learn loads of different skills, you're going to be mentored by guides and staff and industry professionals. So if you're interested, make sure you actually look out for it, search it online and apply. Mm -hmm. um, but also guys, test yourself, you know, and I think again, that's what this program is about, you know, it's about coming in, even if you have a thought of if you want to do this, you know, because I think sometimes, you know, people almost kind of segregate themselves of saying, okay, cool, this might be just a people who figured out that they want to get into this industry. I think, you know, there's also a level of, I'd say, curiosity that I want everyone here to have, you know, where it's like, you know, if you want to test yourself or going into a space that you might not be so interested in, but want to try it and actually mm -hmm. understand if it is for you or not, I definitely sort of say that this program here will definitely, definitely lead you. And the last thing I'd say is don't be afraid. You know, I think mm -hmm. sometimes, again, all it starts with is just saying yes, you know, and I think sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's sometimes taking a leap of faith is probably the best thing you've ever done to be fair. So don't be afraid. One million percent. Um, it's still sort of the confidence. And yeah, man, sky's the limit, guys. So I've got two more questions before we wrap up. So I want you to imagine us boarding. Do I close my eyes for this part or am I just. Oh, yeah, close your eyes. Okay, Let's close make eyes. it mysterious. <laughs> so I want you to imagine, <laughs> you know, you're boarding a plane, the plane lands, you take a short car journey, you knock on a. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no hotel on this trip. <laughs> so we get to the door and we knock on the door. And in front of you, both of you see the 15-year-old version of yourselves. Wow, wow. What is one thing that you would say to your 15-year-old self? Ooh. Do you know what? That's a good question. And I know these sort of questions are asked a lot of the time, but, like, honestly, what I'll tell my 15-year-old my self is one thing and one thing only. Go through the motions, you know, because I think also sometimes we always have this level of trying to get everything right, you know, and I wish I told myself that not everything is supposed to be perfect. You're generally supposed to make mistakes, so that way you learn. So I honestly tell myself the more mistakes you make, the better person you're going to become. Mm -hmm. Because I think at the same time, you know, as you mentioned, you know, 15-year-old us, we're very confused, you know. We just lost our father. We didn't know what we wanted to do with ourselves. We, you know, we were asking a lot of questions as to what would become of us next, you know. But I think if I would tell myself anything, is keep making mistakes and learn from them. Mm -hmm. Learn from those mistakes. Yeah. What would you tell yourself? Ooh, um, I, it's probably less what I tell myself, more what I do to myself. I probably give myself a massive hug, to be honest. You know, and say it's, wow. it's going to be okay. You know, um, you know, kind of similar to what Kevin said. You know, very confused. Mm. Um, and you know, it's it's a lot, isn't it? Like, but I think I just give myself a hug because I think you know, it's just that energy that I want to fill mm. myself with. It's all going to be okay, and right. you know, again, the sky's the limit, really. So, yeah. And to wrap up one piece of creative advice that you would give to young people who want to break into the creative industry? Well, I'd start if you'd if you allow me. Yeah, please, I think you should. Um, listen, you know, I feel as if sometimes people feel as if the creative world is like this ultra hype universe that you literally just wake up in one day, you know, and I think it's, it's not that, you know, I think the one advice I'd give is to demystify the creative space, you know. Yeah. The creative space is what you believe creativity is, you know, there's no sure. such rule, there's no such thing as a rule book or there's no such thing as a, your creativity is better than mine, it's all subjective. And I really just want everyone to understand that creativity is a mindset, it's a mood, um, and just be great and you know, influence the world as much as you can. I'd say my piece of advice is be inspired. And I think inspiration is a thing where, you know, I think we kind of you know, mistake imitation for inspiration. Inspiration is taking what's out there but putting your spin on it, you know? And that's what makes you the creative because it's like, what is it through your own creative lens? So I think, you know, we've always got this thing of, oh, but I don't want to do what the next person's doing. I think, you know, you need to take inspiration from what's been done already, but show us what your take is on that, to be and quite fair. And that's how you make your own lane. And that's how you create your own lane, to be quite fair. So I definitely sort of say, you know, be inspired. And guys, imitation is a level of flattery, you know? And so when I've seen any idea of mine that's obviously gone a bit more mainstream, I take a very big pride of myself, to be quite fair. So be inspired, but also remember, inspiration is your interpretation of what that is. So, yeah. Guys, it's been incredible. Mate, that was a powerful conversation. <laughs> Thank you, bro. That all was sick. good, all good. That was sick. Um, I'm Jeremiah, again, the trustee at the Kurt Geiger Kindness Foundation. Thank you for watching Inspiration Sessions.
Bitte fragt's mich. <lacht>